It's Friday, March 4th, 2011, and you're watching This Week in Linux, where today we're going to be talking about distro releases. This week showed several new distro releases, or at least milestones for several different distros. OpenSUSE version 11.04 Release Candidate 2 came out this week. Since this is a second release candidate, there really weren't any major changes made. There were a bunch of bugs fixed, I think 132, 136, something like that. So within the next few weeks, or maybe even the next month, we should see the final release of OpenSUSE 11.4. Also this week, Mandriva Linux 2011 Alpha 2 has become available. I seem to remember talking about Alpha 1 just a week or two ago, so they are making very rapid progress. Also this week, Corora 14 Beta 3 has become available. Corora is a distro that I've used a long time ago, back when Compiz first started, back when it was called something different. I honestly can't remember the name of what it was at the time. It used to be based on Gentoo, it's now based on Fedora. Someone in the chat room just corrected me, it was Barrel that it was based upon. So it is very nice to see Corora still putting out releases. I seem to remember, like I said, a long time ago trying it out and getting used to using Barrel because it was a live distro and it was entirely based on Gentoo. So if you're interested in trying it out, it is still in beta, so it's probably a little bit buggy, but I'll have links to all of this in the source code below that you can check out. Sabion Linux also had five new editions released this week. The five releases are all based on Sabion version 5.5, and they are the XFCE, LXDE, OpenVZ, Serverbase, and E17. So if you're interested in trying out Sabion Linux, which if I hadn't mentioned before is based on Gen2 Linux with pre-compiled binaries, you can go ahead and do that from their website. I'll have a link to that as well in the source code below. And the final distro we're going to talk about, and the one that's going to take up the majority of the rest of this video with a screencast, Ubuntu 11.04 Alpha 3 released this week. So let's go ahead and move over to the screencast and take a look at it. Alright, so as you see here, we have the Ubuntu 11.04 Alpha 3 running in a virtual machine. Now when I go to log in, I'm given these options here at the bottom. I can log into the traditional Ubuntu desktop edition, which is running the Unity interface. I can log into the classic desktop, which is running GNOME 2.x for now. Or if I had it installed, I could log into the 2D Unity interface. I don't have that installed, so I showed it to you in the last video, the last, the Alpha 2 video. So let's go ahead and log into Unity and just see how it looks and feels now. Okay, and after a little bit of bugginess there, there some, seems to be some issue with the VirtualBox editions where the screen doesn't always line up correctly when you have it full screen. Anyway, log out, log back in, and everything works fine. You'll see here we now have the full Unity interface with all of its 3D everything working here in VirtualBox. So on the left hand side we've got the launcher as we're accustomed to seeing. However now, if we click on one of the icons, we can drag it out and move them around to change places, at least as far down as there. Uh, we can add new items to the launcher, we can remove items from the launcher, we can even auto hide the launcher, but we'll get into that in just a little bit. Now what has changed since Alpha 2? First and foremost, we have a newer version of the kernel. If we go in and look at the set of applications, we'll go into the terminal, and there you'll notice we're running version 2.6.38-5, which is officially 2.6.38 Release Candidate 6. I believe Release Candidate 7 just came out, and they're planning on having the final version of 2.6.38 by April, so we are definitely making great progress there. Other than that, really the biggest change is that they've got a working functional Unity Dash now. So if I go ahead and click in the upper left hand corner, I'm greeted with the full Dash with even a Maximize button. So if I go ahead and click on that, it takes up the entire screen like the previous, the Netbook Edition used to do. Here we've got all these different ways that we can find apps that are pre-installed on the system. So if I selected Find Media Apps, it'll show me all of the media apps available. Here in the upper right hand corner now I can select different categories like internet and look at all the internet apps. I can say accessories or system. Basically very quickly and easily change between them or go to all applications to see everything that's installed. And you see it's, it's gone back down to just a subset. One thing I've noticed about this launcher, and I'm not terribly pleased with it, but hopefully they'll fix that before the final release. If you go to find more apps and go to view all of the results, you'll see there are a lot of them here. There are actually 66 applications here. I cannot scroll through that with my scroll wheel. Not a big deal, but it is definitely a bit of an inconvenience to be scrolling down the side here like that. Again, not really that much of a game changer or anything, but it is a little off for me. 
In addition, one of the other features that they're really touting this time is they've implemented a places feature, which is similar to what GNOME used to have with their places. If you click here on files and folders, you'll see the favorite files and folders available. You've got a drop down that gives you all of these different places that you can go to, such as documents. There's nothing there, but you've still got that option available. So it is nice to see them working more toward giving more functionality. Another nice new feature that they've incorporated with this, the right mouse button is starting to work with certain things. So if I right mouse click on the desktop, I can go to change background. I can change the background here, or I can go change the theme. And crossed fingers, hope this works. If I click on a different theme, the top bar changes as well. It's a minor change, it's not a huge difference. The right bar does not change, but it is nice because a lot of people were really getting frustrated by the fact that they could not change the top bar at all. In addition, it's even possible to make this top bar to change the opacity to make it transparent. To do that, I had to install Compass Config Setting Manager. So I go into this panel, I go into Find More Applications, go into the System List, and choose Compass Config Settings Manager. From here, I can make some changes to all of the Unity settings. You see Unity Plugin, and I can tell the launcher whether or not to auto-hide. Currently, it's set to Dodge Windows, so if I scroll over toward it, it goes away and then comes back. You can set it to auto hide, so it'll go away whenever it feels like it should. Or you can set it to never hide. You can set it also to just dodge the active window. One other very cool thing about this is, if you hold the Windows key or the Super key or whatever it is on your keyboard, it brings up these little shortcuts that tell these different applications to run whenever you hit them. So if I say hold the Super key and hit 2, hopefully in just a second, Firefox will open. There we go. Firefox is open. It seems to be somewhat integrated into the top bar now, but not entirely, so making progress. Uh, in addition, I think this newer version, Beta 12, does follow the GTK theming just a little bit better than previous editions have. And by the way, hitting that super key again without holding it will open the dash for you, so you can hit it once to open it, once to close it. That's just a little bit of convenience. Alt F1, if I had this launcher set to auto hide, Alt F1 would bring it back out. These are all things that you can change in that Compass Config Settings Manager. And what I think is one of the biggest new features, it's one of the features that's been really sort of back and forth between the Ubuntu and Banshee community, or at least the canonical and Banshee communities, is the music stores in Banshee. So if I come up here and open Banshee, you'll see here down the left-hand side we have the online media section. Before, Banshee had the Amazon MP3 store only. Ubuntu was threatening, or asking, excuse me, asking them to deactivate the Amazon MP3 store or change it to give them the majority of the funds. However, after a compromise, it's been worked out that the Amazon store and the Ubuntu One Music store will both be included in Banshee. 75% of each store's commissions go to Canonical. 25% goes to the Gnome Foundation for both. So it is very nice to give the user that option. They can do whatever they want to as far as music. To be honest, I am an Amazon person. I've been using Amazon for a long time, so that was probably where I would go to get my music. However, it is nice to have the option just in case. And speaking of Ubuntu One, there have been some significant changes made to the Ubuntu One panel. If you go ahead and click on Ubuntu One there, you get this different option that tells you you can join now, or you can log in if you already have an account. Let me go ahead and do that. All right, and I am now logged in. You see here it tells me how much of my two gigabytes of free space I'm using. You can tell it to connect for file sync. You've got your account information, which I'm not going to click because I'd rather not give out my personal info. You can show your folders that you are synchronizing here, your different devices, different Ubuntu machines that you've synchronized into Ubuntu One, and then you've got the different services that you can install. You see here you need to install the package desktop couch Ubuntu One to enable replication. So data sync is, the, I guess this is sort of like the Dropbox data sync service. But that's about all I've got to say about Ubuntu 11.04's Alpha 3 release. If there's anything that I've missed, feel free to let me know about it in the comments section below. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.